In the heart of Atlanta's vibrant rap scene, a dark undercurrent of violence and rivalry has been brewing. Playboy Cardi, one of the most unique and influential artists of the past decade, has found himself entangled in a deadly feud that goes beyond music. Known for his unconventional selection of beats and delivery, fashion sense, and mysterious persona, he has managed to build a cult following and dominate the new age of hip-hop. Yet behind the facade of success lies a connection to one of Atlanta's most notorious gangs, the Backstreet Homicide. Opposing them is another fearsome gang the Front Street henchmen, led by the equally notorious rapper in the streets, Ola Runt. The rivalry between these two factions has escalated from diss tracks to deadly encounters, leaving a trail of bloodshed and shattered lives. If you've kept up with the whole situation, this is all review, but new information suggests that the key players involved are even more devious than we thought, even involving a point-blank homicide of an infant. But the question remains, how exactly is Playboy Cardi involved in Atlanta's deadly gang war, and has it gone too far? Playboy Cardi's connection to street affiliations are mostly unknown, given that he's been rising in the ranks in the music industry since the mid-2010s and was believed to grow up in the suburbs of Atlanta, but with the dangerous lifestyle of an artist and a genre deeply intertwined in gang culture, he found himself networking with killers, whether the purpose was for protection or simply just branding. Regardless, this connection was first prominently referenced in his album Whole Lotta Red via cryptic lyrics and he hasn't looked back since. Many fans believe the title of his latest album even alludes to his affiliation with the Bloods, and more specifically, the Backstreet Homicide, allegedly being introduced to the group in 2018 by his cousin Red Coldhearted. His affiliation was confirmed by signing actual members of the gang, now officially known as the Homicide Gang Duo, to his record label Opium. Throughout the last few years, he would be seen publicly with other members affiliated with Homicide unofficially, and even even reference the gang in ad libs throughout unreleased tracks. Not to mention collaborating with rappers like Lil One DTE. He would also reference a few of his close affiliates within the gang in his track Stop Breathing from Whole Lotta Red, such as Migo Bliff, Problem Child, Bino, and R5. Later on in the track, Cardi owns up to deeper involvement with Homicide's activities, including within their long-standing feud with the Front Street henchmen, potentially taking ownership for taking someone's life from the rival set. This feud is not merely lyrical, it has real-world implications. Cardi's music now serves both as somewhat of a chronicle of these events and a form of participation in the ongoing conflict, demonstrating the blurred lines between his art and the brutal street reality. I got two different lives, and when I'm not being king, damn and now this other shit, I'm in the streets for real. Homicide Gang and Playboy Cardi's key rival within the gang war seems to be Ola Runt. Currently still in jail for previous crimes, Ola Runt hails from Zone 6 in Atlanta, a neighborhood known for its rough environment and its significant influence on the trap music scene that we know today. In fact, Zone 6 has produced several notable rappers, including Gucci Mane, who is considered a mentor to many young artists from the area. Ola Runt's early life was marked by turbulence and frequent run-ins with the law. By the age of 16, he was sentenced to five years in juvenile detention for armed robbery and breaking into cars. This period of incarceration proved pivotal for Ola as he began to channel his experiences into making music, laying the foundation for his future music career. Ola Runt wouldn't start getting attention until 2019 with the release of Brazy Story, a spin-off of King Vaughn's Crazy Story, showcasing his unique style and helped build him a buzz in the Atlanta rap scene and beyond. The very same year, Ola Runt capitalized on his newfound hype, releasing a tribute to his fellow Zone 6 legend, Gucci Mane, titled Feel Like Goo Wop. The song not only garnered considerable attention publicly, but more importantly, from Gucci Mane, who even hopped on the remix and tried to sign him to his 1017 label shortly after. However, Ola Runt was unfortunately already contractually obligated to Cinematic Music Group after being noticed by an A&R from the label in January of 2020. Gucci Mane attempted to buy him out of his contract, but the deal fell through due to less favorable terms. And so, Ola Runt remained on the Cinematic roster, although he still received the 1017 chain and pivotal collaboration with Gucci Mane that continues running up streams. Big Bank, a pivotal figure in the Atlanta to rap scene is the CEO of Duct Tape Entertainment, or DTE for short. His connections with prominent stars like Future and Young Thug have cemented his influence in the industry. Big Bang's role extends beyond just music, deeply intertwining with Atlanta's street politics, particularly with the Backstreet Homicide Gang. Although prior to the recent war, Homicide and Henchmen used to be close associates. In fact, the conflict's origins trace all the way back to Big Bang's dislike of Ola Runt signing with Cinematic Music Group instead of his own label, DTE. He felt 
well snubbed, leading to rising tensions. Rumors suggest that Big Bank's anger over this choice was a significant catalyst for the feud that led to the all-out gang war. In response to the growing animosity, Olerunt released a diss track titled Mob Father, targeting Big Bank and his son Lil One DTE. Soon after, Olerunt was arrested in the parking lot of Lennox Mall. During his arrest, he publicly called Big Bank a rat, accusing him of snitching on him. This public declaration added fuel to the fire as it was a significant accusation within their circles, further entrenching the animosity between the two factions. These events laid the groundwork for the deadly gang war between Playboy Cardi's Backstreet Homicide and Ola Runt's Front Street Henchmen, transforming personal and professional disputes into violence. The tension between Big Bank and Ola Runt continued to escalate when Big Bank took to Instagram Live to respond to the diss track. During the live, Big Bank retaliated, claiming Ola and his dad were broke and just seeking clout off his name. Ola Runt replied with his own live, directly targeting Big Bank and now one of his mentees, Problem Child, another prominent figure in Homicide. Not much is really known about Problem Child, at least online, other than he's a supposed contract killer involved in a staggering 13 arrests since 2008. However, with his connection to Big Bank, he was able to secure a million dollar deal with Future, offering him a chance to transform his life. Problem Child Real M, the first artist is Problem Child. What up? Fresh out the chain game, nigga. They thought problem was over. But the beef took a deadly turn with the murder of Big Sosa, a close affiliate of Homicide Gang and close friend to Problem Child, who was allegedly shot in the head on Smith Street Highway. Problem Child was present during the incident and shared his grief via social media and his music in a track titled A Letter to Big Sosa. Shortly after the news broke, Ola Runt and 24 Left Eye of the Front Street Henchmen mocked Big Sosa's death online. However, this act of disrespect provoked a violent response, leading to 24 Left Eye being shot multiple times, an incident for which Lil One DT DE later took credit for live with Problem Child. But how exactly does this all relate to Playboy Cardi, you may ask? Well, Big Sosa and Cardi were reportedly very close, allegedly possibly even blood cousins. You know, I lost my brother recently. His name was Sosa and I really loved him so much. And Some even believe that his death delayed the whole lot of Red album release in early 2020, as Cardi released the supposed lead single at the time, At Me, with nothing to follow for almost a year after. But when the album finally released later that year in 2020, Cardi directly addressed the incidents and his feelings towards the ongoing feud in the track Stop Breathing. In these lyrics, Playboy Cardi publicly announces the retaliation he ordered upon Ola Runt while he remains in jail, as well as the henchmen overall. In a sense, Playboy Cardi's music serves as a public proxy for the Backstreet Homicide set's actions and what can and will be done at a moment's notice if anyone were to oppose them. It makes sense now why exactly Playboy Cardi delayed his album to include such information within the spectacle of his largely publicized and anticipated album. The Front Street henchmen wasted no time in responding to Playboy Cardi's diss tracks towards them. It was was an embarrassment, if true. Public knowledge that Homicide got one over them. So halfway through the next year, 24 Left Eye of the Henchmen drops a response copying the title of Playboy Cardi's album, addressing how Playboy Cardi was placing $30,000 bounties on everyone involved in Big Sosa's death. A couple months later, Benji Bluebills, also supposedly affiliated with the Henchmen, released a Stop Breathing remix titled Stop Bleeding, in which he details their side of the story, of course, while taking shots at Cardi. Your homie killed your homie, I bet you ain't know. In the track, he pokes fun at Cardi's baby mother, Iggy Azalea, but more importantly, gives some contradictory insight into Big Sosa's death. So in these lyrics, Benji Bluebills actually claims that the henchmen were not in fact responsible for Big Sosa's murder. Rather, it was his own homicide associate later to be discovered as Problem Child, who allegedly backdoored him during a dice game gone wrong. This new information has remained to be confirmed, but if true, would be called for treason within Homicide's own walls, which could decimate its entire existence with members starting to point fingers at each other especially since Playboy Cardi already publicly co-signed Problem Child in his latest album. Additionally, Benji called out Cardi for lying about getting Ola Runt shanked in jail, claiming it never happened, also calling in question his and Homicide's power within the system. And something else to note for later on in the story is the comparison to Hello Kitty. The feud escalated even further though, with the reported suicide of R5 Homicide, another close affiliate of Playboy Cardi referenced via Stop Breathing, that the Front Street henchmen were quick to capitalize on to taunt their rivals. 
Benji Blue Bills drops another diss track titled Red Dot, aimed at mocking their deceased friend. Despite some occasional features following the years post Whole Lotta Red, Playboy Cardi has remained relatively silent regarding the Atlanta gang war, which is honestly pretty typical of him in general given his mysterious persona. However, rather unexpectedly, in the last weeks of 2023, he broke his silence, releasing a series of music videos exclusively through alternative social media platforms like Instagram and YouTube. The very first was titled You're the Moon and or A Different Day. Another was 2024, among other tracks. It seemed that these new drops were his return to his next highly anticipated album rollout for I Am Music. However, so too was it the re-emergence of the Homicide vs. Henchman Free Fire, because in the track You're the Moon, he finally responded to the henchman, and more specifically, Benji Bluebill's shots at him in the years prior. Yeah, yeah I was looking for Benji. Hey, hey, smoke at me street. In these lyrics, Playboy Cardi references Mean Street Studios, a recording studio in the heart of Atlanta, in which he recorded a significant portion of his release studio albums, essentially threatening Benji by claiming he spends a lot of time in his neighborhood without any repercussions from the henchmen. Once again, Benji Bluebills attempts to discredit Playboy Cardi's lyrics by stating he's never even been to Mean Street nor seen Cardi there, as well as replying with a diss track of his own titled I'm Right Here, accompanied by a music video that even featured You're the Moon at the beginning of the recording. Yeah. If you say my name, then on that same day, nigga, death gone off. If you say my name or say my game, you hit with a Lego box. Benji Blue Bills made it clear that he's not hiding from Playboy Cardi whatsoever, and even fired some threats of his own. As mentioned, Playboy Cardi continued releasing a series of music videos in the early weeks of 2024. And now that we've uncovered some deeper analysis of each key player's lyrics and public statements from the past, there may be more than meets the eye. One of Playboy Cardi's later music videos in the series was titled Evil Jordan, with threatening lyrics such as putting undisclosed individuals on the news or food chain, aka killing them. However, this is a rather regular occurrence in rap lyrics so it could be disregarded. But the more significant indication of who Playboy Cardi was aiming sights towards could lie within the music video. In that, if you recall, Benji Blue Bills compared Cardi to Hello Kitty. Coincidentally, Playboy Cardi was drinking out of a Hello Kitty mug while rapping the menacing murder lyrics. Obviously, this is just a speculation at this point, but considering how figurative rappers have been in the past and present when discussing ongoing illegal activity, the Hello Kitty mug could very well be a symbol to represent Benji Bluebills as the target for the lyrics. But more recently, there's been a new development with a key player in the Atlanta gang war, Problem Child. Following a parole violation and being sent back to jail, he is currently being charged and investigated for five murders, including rumors of the heinous act of kidnapping and shooting an infant in the face, likely one of his op's children, among various other crimes involving other individuals. Now, this may seem rather insignificant and solely pose problems for a problem child's own criminal record and life, but it has much greater implications when we consider Atlanta's recent crackdown on gang violence. As we all know, Young Thug has already been fighting a RICO charge for allegedly being the leader of a gang, YSL, but now problem child's multiple severe legal issues pose an issue too. For future and ongoing investigations, into anyone associated with the groups he's involved in, regardless of how direct their involvement was in the criminal activities. And with Playboy Cardi's very publicized lyrics aiming towards violence and real events, he could very well be in the sights of law enforcement too, especially being such a high status individual. Law enforcement tends to target the leaders of organizations to cut off their funding and fuel in gang related activities. After all, without the rappers spreading awareness of said activities, there would likely be less retaliation by opposing groups. But in conclusion, the deadly gang war between Playboy Cardi's Backstreet Homicide and Ola Runt's Front Street Henchman has left a profound impact on Atlanta's community and culture. What began as a feud between two rising rap stars escalated into a cycle of violence that claimed numerous lives, devastated families, and drew national attention to the darker side of Atlanta's street life. For all of our sakes, including some of our favorite rappers, it can all be reconciled to end all of the madness.